Hi everyone. I don't have a lot of time to put into production quality on this video, but I am going to try to keep it interesting and conduct an experiment that may have some results that you were interested in, or maybe you didn't know you were interested in. I have here some slices of white oak, and they were cut off the tree uh, two or three days ago, so still pretty green. And I am going to pop these two right here, matching pieces, in the oven at 175 degrees for one hour and one of them will be wrapped with aluminum foil and the other will not. And I put a piece in the oven last night just to see what happened, uh, about the same amount of time, and it developed quite a bit of checking. It was, uh, it was a bit worse last night, but it's been about 24 hours since then, so some of the checking has evened out a little bit as the, as the wood equalized. But uh, I'm kind of curious to see what the immediate and long-term results will be with this right here. Long-term meaning within a couple days, so I will do this tonight and then post the results in a couple days. It's been about 24 hours since I started. Uh, the next morning I, I checked it and I didn't see a whole lot of a change in this one. So I turned the oven back on for another hour at 175 degrees. And then I did that again after work, another hour at 175 degrees. So I, it's starting to, to check a lot more now. And I haven't opened this one up yet to see what it looks like. I was just trying to get some kind of a more noticeable result from this one. What kind of surprised me when I put my moisture meter on there uh, is that hardwood, there we go, is that I'm still getting 35% uh, moisture content. And this is one of the ones that I haven't put through the oven. It seems like whenever I'm doing this on hardwood, it maxes out at 35%. And that might just be something that I have to figure out from the instruction manual. I guess that was a pretty easy question to answer. Uh, but I'm, I'm not going to use it for anything if it's still at 35%. And it's the same on the, on the edge grain. I was wondering if that might have made a difference, but no, it does not. I can feel that this one is lighter. It might just be so waterlogged that three hours in the oven actually did not dry it out. But you can see that it dried it a little bit, at least on the surface, because it is, uh, is checking quite a bit. So I think the next step to do, I could end it here, but what the heck, I already got this far, so... Let's open this one up and take a look at what we got, and then maybe I'll put this through at a higher temperature, both of these, uh, to see what happens then. Oh yeah, that is kind of what I expected. Now that looks like it is soaking wet, more so than this one, but really that was just all that internal moisture sweating out of the surface, and that's still a little warm because I just took it out from the last batch. So you can see some of that is evaporating. Uh, actually, the only time that I have ever dried around uh, completely without cracking was those two large maple, uh, ambrosia maple rounds that you might have seen in a previous video. And to dry those, uh, it was in the middle of the summer, and I left them in a plastic bag in the driveway black plastic bag uh, during the day. And then in the evening, I would take them out of the bag and it would look kind of like this. And I'd let all this surface moisture evaporate and shake the water out of the bag. And then I would put it back into the bag for another day and let it cook again. And what that was doing is um, it, would, it would bring a lot of this moisture to the surface and draw it out of the wood. But then I would wrap it up again so that the, the uh, moisture could equalize throughout the rest of the board. And so it was just going little by little. Whereas this one, since the surface wasn't covered, uh, the surface is drying out faster than the entire board can, uh, can shrink, which is causing that check in there. So this is, uh, this is promising. And in case you're wondering why I'm even baking the wood in the first place, if it's not really uh, drying it out, you know, what's the point if it's wrapped up? One of the main advantages is that uh, this thing is filled with bugs. So by putting this in the oven for... Uh, an hour at 175, I have killed anything that might have been living in there, making these tunnels. And I could bring this inside the house if I wanted to and let it dry there without having to worry about something boring its way out and getting into uh, any of the furniture or anything else. 
So uh, I guess I will wrap this up again and maybe we can try 300. Let's see what happens. I should probably mention that if you're going to try this in your house, you're going to want to have some kind of ventilation going to the outside, like a range hood. Not just one that recirculates the air, one that actually vents to the outside. And also crack a window so that it can draw in some fresh air, because this will generate some smoke, especially at this temperature. quick look, but I will get back to this tomorrow and it's cool. Now, hard to believe it since you just started watching this video, but it is already tomorrow and this has been sitting for long enough that I think we can call this done. Now, I checked it with the moisture meter again and I got pretty much the same readings as before. There we go. 35 for most of it. Now if I get closer to the edge, to that sapwood, it starts to go down uh, actually under 35, 30, 29, 28, 21. Uh, but inside here, there's still a lot of moisture. And that is why you have all this surface checking. In case I didn't explain it well enough earlier, the surface checks happen when the uh, uh, in the oven or if you put it in the kiln too early or out in the sun, the surface is going to dry out first and then the, the deeper parts of the board are going to dry out later, which means the surface will start to shrink and it won't be able to, uh, the whole thing won't shrink because it's drying too quickly on the surface. So the, the deeper part of the board, the, the center of the board is going to prevent movement while the surface tries to shrink and that's going to cause all these, these radial checks there. And that's going to close up a little bit over time as the inside catches up to the uh, lower moisture levels. And it's already started to happen with this piece. You can barely see some of those checks now. But uh, the inside of this, if I were to uh, cut this in half again on the bandsaw, I'm guessing that the inside would not have all of these checks. And in fact, we'll just do that to keep it interesting. We'll slice this in half and we'll see what that looks like. Um, and then we'll come back and open this one up. Well, there you have it. That's the inside and that is the outside. And finally, let's have the grand reveal. I found my big aluminum foil. Makes this a lot easier. That sweated out quite a bit of moisture, and it definitely darkened it up a bit too. It'd be interesting to see how the color looks once it dries, but there is no checking, and I don't feel any shrinkage on the, on the bark. This probably helped equalize the moisture levels quite a bit, so I may wrap this up and periodically take it out to, uh, to dry it slowly. Uh, it seems to be a pretty good approach, because now I know that everything that was living inside of this and was eating the bark is dead. Any fungus, bacteria, mold, anything that might have been there is probably halted right now. And uh, this is going to dry out to be a, a pretty nice piece and I will definitely make... Um, I have no idea what I'll do with this. But uh, anyway, this is The Snecker Show and I hope you enjoyed me trashing my stuff so that you don't have to trash yours. Thanks for watching.
Thanks for sticking around to the end. 